Hi, this is Scott. It's been a while since I did a video, and uh, today being a beautiful day, I thought, hey, why not do a video today? My work truck, my, well, work slash hobby truck, um, it's a 1978 Grumman P30, and it's got a 350 engine in it. And I still have the original carburetor that the truck came with. It's a Holley four barrel. Uh, I rebuilt it a few times and uh, still having problems with the secondaries opening up, the stutter, you know, just can't get it right. And I'm not sure what the original power valve um, was in the carburetor because it's been rebuilt before. So at this point, uh, I need the truck to run. So I decided to change the carburetor and put a brand new one on there. And I'm going to go to Edelbrock. Um, that's what they recommended for this truck. That's what today's project is. And uh, let me uh, show you what uh, what's in there now. Okay, so here's the carburetor that's in there now. I mean, uh, like I said, I've rebuilt it a few times. And just uh, that secondary, it's a vacuum secondary. I've changed springs and done all the good stuff that they recommend. But I just can't get it to do what I want. And... With the weight that I carry, I need it to uh, be a little more responsive. So, um, step into my truck here and uh, show you what we got. So, for Metal Brock, I got a brand new one. It's got an electric choke, it's the one I have on there now because the manifold rotted out where the, the heat operated. Uh, choke was on the manifold, and then I ended up changing the manifold to Edelbrock. Uh, so there's no spot for that. So I ended up putting a manual choke in. And manual chokes aren't great. So I'm looking forward to having an electric choke. That's going to be a big plus. So um, here we go. We'll see you in a little bit. Thanks. Welcome back. Uh, I got the old carburetor off and um, getting ready to put the new one on. The only thing I had to do was um, put a plug in for vacuum that I don't need. Uh, and I'll show you that. It's right here. I put that plug in. Uh, there's the old carburetor. And as you can see, <clears throat> they look different, but. Uh, not too much. I uh, shouldn't have too much of a hard time. I'm going to take that linkage right there, that, that adapter, and I'm going to put it right there. And we should be uh, in pretty good shape other than that. Uh, so let's do it. Well, I ran into one little snag. I went to change the um, auto fit, the adapter, uh, the original one. The This is the one that they sent with it. Uh, it's the ball type and this is the one that's on there and it's the clip type but I'm going to stay with the original so I have to open the hole up to um, quarter inch I measured it so I'm just going to have to open this hole up a little bit with a drill we should be on our way okay I'm back I uh, drilled that out to quarter inch and installed the adapter so now I am ready to put the carburetor on the truck um, just want you to see here's the original one and it's good as new and ready to go on so well you know it's always that one thing that goes wrong in every job and I just ran into it the problem is with the old carburetor, there wasn't a lot of space between the stud and the carburetor itself. So the studs originally had to be cut down a little bit for that clearance. So you just had enough to catch. With the new carburetor, the flange is a little thicker. So now we don't have enough thread coming through. So what we're going to have to do is remove the adapter plate from the manifold and put longer bolts in. And let me show you what I'm talking about. So you can see the adapter plate and these bolts. These are bolts actually, they come in from the bottom. 
and there's cutouts in the bottom that hold them from turning okay so we need to take those out and put ones in that are about a half inch longer and then uh, from there I hope hopefully there'll be no problems so uh, yeah let's get to it okay the new problem is these are 5 16 24 which is fine thread and I only have 5 16 to 18 so I'm gonna need to go to the store and buy some these are 5 16 24 by 1 inch I'm gonna get 5 16 24 by one and a half half inch should do it one quick note uh, I'm gonna be leaving the the truck with the intake manifold open for a little bit because I have to go get those bolts so a good idea is to cover the intake so that nothing gets down in there you never know mouse nuts anything so I just went ahead and uh, put some duct tape over the opening so that um, it stays nice and clean all right here's the update I went to uh, the local hardware and you know, uh, 5 16 28 is not a common bolt for most things, usually 5 16 18. So, and it was stainless that I was looking for, so it was even harder to keep things rolling. I got the 5 16 18, and I'm going to change all the bolts to 5 16 18 stainless. It's not going to make a difference. So, uh, anyway, uh, there's one of the new bolts, and you can see the difference in the length. Um, so those will work out. Those are going to work out just fine. So now I'm going to put the adapter plate back on and uh, move forward with the installation of this carburetor and get this thing running. Take a look. It's all hooked up. Hooked up the throttle and the return spring and the fuel line and the vacuum lines. For the most part, the carburetor is all hooked up. The only thing is now that this is an electric carburetor, electric choke carburetor, I need to hook, uh, find some switched power and hook that up, and then we'll be ready to try it. switched power to uh, activate the electric choke on this new carburetor so what I decided to do is go off the, um, the wire that excites the alternator that's switched and I verified that with my meter so we'll turn the ignition on and there you go we get battery voltage so so that's the wire so now I'm gonna hook it up and then we'll be ready to fire this baby up okay up switched power to the electric choke and double checked all the connections and nuts and bolts and all that good stuff and we're ready to give it a go pretty exciting can't wait so let's do it
morning, Greek. Uh, I was having a little problem with the, uh, the RPMs being too high. And after checking, I realized that one of the linkages needs to be adjusted uh, actually on cruise control that I put in. Uh, I need to give it a little more slack. So that's what was holding it up. At first, I thought it was the uh, idle stop screw, but it wasn't. So now, the only thing I'm going to do is let it warm up, and then I'm going to adjust the idle air mixture, make sure that that's good, and readjust that uh, cruise control cable and take it for a ride. Last thing I ran into uh, on this carburetor job um, was the air filter. The stock air filter didn't fit. I thought it was going to, but um, the way the carburetor is designed, there's just no way to make it work. So uh, I won't be able to use this anymore. So I had to go out and buy one of these. It's not really what I wanted to do, but what are you gonna do? That's the way it is. So we're gonna put that on now and uh, hopefully that'll be the end of it. Okay. So the air filter's on and uh, I also, I replaced the uh, return springs. The old one was kind of rusty and it was weak. The position of the, um, the hole that uh, you connected to was a little further away. So the spring tension was a little harder. So I had to extend it a little bit, the spring make an extension so there wouldn't be as much um, pressure, return pressure, um, because the cruise control that I put in would be fighting that spring all the time. So there's the final installation. And now I'm gonna let you hear it. it sounds great. Thanks again for joining me. Bye-bye.